But imagine, if you will, a young person with dreams bigger than themselves, standing on the precipice of making a life-altering decision. This person, let's call them Alex, had faced one setback after another. They had a vision, a dream they were tirelessly working towards, but life, as it often does, threw curveball after curveball their way. Just when Alex thought they had a clear path forward, another obstacle emerged, seemingly more insurmountable than the last. Now, most people might think this is where Alex's story ends, succumbing to the pressure, giving up on their dream. But what if I told you it was just the beginning? What if I told you that despite the setbacks, the heartaches, and the countless times Alex was knocked down, they chose to press on? You see, Alex understood something very crucial about life. It's not the absence of obstacles that defines our path, but our response to them. This brings us to the heart of our discussion today, the sheer unyielding power of perseverance. Life, my friends, is a series of challenges, obstacles, and setbacks. It's not a question of if they will come, but when they do, how will you respond? Will you let them define you, or will you, like Alex, choose to press on? Think back to a moment in your own life when you were faced with a challenge that seemed insurmountable. Remember the feelings of despair, the moments of doubt. What did you do? Did you give up, or did you find within yourself the strength to press on? The truth is, each one of us has an Alex within us. Each one of us has faced moments where the easier choice would have been to give up. Yet here we are, because you chose to press on, to face your obstacles head on. But how do we cultivate this resilience, this ability to keep moving forward no matter what life throws our way? Today, I want to share with you the principles that not only help Alex but have helped countless individuals around the world overcome their obstacles and achieve their dreams. These are the principles that can turn your biggest challenges into your greatest victories. And I ask you to keep an open mind, reflect on your own challenges, your own moments of doubt, and consider how applying these principles can change not just your approach to obstacles but your entire life's trajectory. Not just as a speaker and an audience, but as fellow travelers on life's winding path, supporting and uplifting each other every step of the way, together we'll uncover the secrets to turning our trials into triumphs and our hardships into stepping stones for success. Perseverance, a word we often hear but don't fully grasp its power until we're in the thick of our battles, trying to reach our goals. Think of perseverance as the inner flame that keeps burning even when the night is at its darkest. It's what makes the difference between dreams realized and dreams deferred. Let's talk about people who've embodied perseverance, those who've etched their names in the annals of history not because they never faced challenges, but because they refused to be defined by them. Consider Thomas Edison, who faced 10,000 failures before inventing the light bulb. Each failure brought him closer to success because he never saw these setbacks as reasons to give up, but as steps on the path to innovation. Or think of Abraham Lincoln, who faced defeat after defeat in his political life, only to become one of the most revered presidents of the United States. His story teaches us that failure is not the end but an opportunity to grow stronger and more resilient. The psychological impact of choosing to move forward in the face of adversity is profound. When you decide to keep going, you're not just pushing past external obstacles, you're battling the internal naysayers telling you it's impossible. The moment you decide not to give up, you shift your mindset from one of defeat to one of potential and possibilities. This shift doesn't just help you overcome the current challenge, it transforms how you approach life's inevitable hurdles. Now, pause for a moment and ask yourself, what could I achieve if I decided never to give up? Imagine the possibilities that could unfold before you if you chose to persevere, to keep that inner flame burning brightly, no matter how strong the winds of adversity blow. Perseverance is not about blindly pushing forward. It's about recognizing when to pivot, when to rest, and when to seek guidance. It's about learning from each setback and using that knowledge to build a stronger foundation for your dreams. So, as we navigate the complexities of our personal and professional lives, remember the power of perseverance. Remember that the difference between success and failure often comes down to who decides to keep going, who chooses to ignite their inner flame of perseverance even when the odds seem stacked against them. Challenge yourselves to embody perseverance in our daily lives. Be the person who looks at challenges as opportunities, who sees failures as lessons, and who knows that the only true defeat comes from giving up. Commit to never giving up on our dreams, to pushing through the barriers, and to achieving the greatness we're all capable of. Remember, the only limit to what we can achieve lies in our willingness to persevere, 
to keep going no matter what happens in our journey. It's natural to encounter obstacles. These are not barriers designed to stop us, but rather stepping stones to greater success. Every hurdle we face is an opportunity in disguise, waiting to be uncovered. This perspective shift is crucial for transforming our challenges into our victories. Think about the common hurdles we face, personal doubt, whispers in our ear telling us we're not good enough, or that our dreams are too far-fetched. External criticism, often from those we respect or care about, can dampen our spirit and derail our progress. But unforeseen circumstances, like a sudden job loss or a global event, can throw our plans into disarray. These challenges, while daunting, are not the end of our story but the beginning of a new chapter. Why then do we turn these obstacles into opportunities? The first step is to embrace them. Instead of asking why me, we should ask what can this teach me? This simple question shifts our mindset from one of victimhood to one of growth and resilience. When faced with personal doubt, the strategy is to build self-efficacy. Set small, achievable goals for yourself. Each time you accomplish one, you chip away at the wall of doubt, brick by brick. Celebrate these victories, no matter how small they are. They are proof of your capability and progress. Dealing with external criticism requires a balance of openness and self-assurance. Listen to what others have to say, but filter it through your own judgment. Constructive criticism can be a valuable tool for growth, but it's important to remain steadfast in your vision. Remember, the most successful people in history were often misunderstood or underestimated by their contemporaries. As for unforeseen circumstances, flexibility is key. Adapt your plans, but keep your eyes on the ultimate goal. Every setback is a lesson in disguise, teaching us to be more resilient, resourceful, and adaptable. Embrace change is an inevitable part of growth. Now, consider this thought-provoking question. How can your biggest challenge today become your biggest victory tomorrow? Imagine looking back a year from now, having turned today's obstacle into a stepping stone for your success. What steps did you take? How did you transform this challenge into an opportunity? Remember, the size of your success is determined by the size of your belief. See obstacles not as dead ends, but as detours on the road to success. Embrace each challenge as an opportunity to grow stronger, wiser, and more resilient. Approach our obstacles with a new perspective. See them as the gifts that they are, opportunities to prove our mettle, to refine our strategies, and to come out on the other side not just as survivors, but as victors. The path to success is paved with obstacles, but with perseverance, resilience, and a shift in perspective, there's no limit to what we can achieve. The role of a positive mindset cannot be overstated. It's the beacon that guides us through the stormiest of seas, the light that illuminates our darkest moments. The importance of maintaining a positive outlook in the face of difficulty is akin to keeping our ship steady and on course, no matter how violent the waves may be. Cultivating positivity is not merely about seeing the glass as half full. It's about understanding that even the empty half is an opportunity to fill in with something new and potentially better. So, how do we foster this mindset? Let's start with gratitude practices. Begin each day by reflecting on what you are thankful for. It could be as simple as a sunny day, a good cup of coffee, or the smile of a loved one. This practice shifts our focus from what we lack to what we possess, enriching our lives with a sense of abundance. Positive affirmations are another powerful tool. Statements like, I am capable, I am resilient, and I am worthy of success, can transform our self-perception and our reality. By affirming our value and our potential, we set the foundation for incredible growth and achievement. Surrounding ourselves with positive influences is crucial. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose to be around those who uplift you, who see the greatness within you even when you might not see it yourself. These individuals not only inspire us but also challenge us to be our best selves. Now, let's turn our attention to stories of transformation, of individuals who, by changing their attitudes, change their circumstances. Consider the story of a young artist who faced rejection after rejection. Each, no could have been a reason to give up, but instead, she chose to see each rejection as a sign that she was one step closer to it. Yes. Today, her art is celebrated worldwide, a testament to the power of a positive mindset. Or think about the entrepreneur who, after a failed business venture, decided to view the failure not as a setback, but as a learning opportunity. This shift in perspective led him to start a new venture, 
applying the lessons he learned from his failure. His company is now thriving, proof that a positive attitude can turn even the bitterest defeat into a sweet victory. So, what negative views do you hold that can be transformed into positive action? Imagine the possibilities that could unfold if you decided to view every challenge as an opportunity to learn. Consider how your life might change if you replaced self-doubt with self-belief. The power of a positive mindset is not just about feeling good, it's about creating a reality that reflects our highest aspirations. It's about turning our cans into cans and our dreams into plans. By choosing positivity, we not only enhance our own lives but also inspire those around us to do the same. Commit to fostering a positive mindset. Embrace gratitude, affirm your worth, surround yourself with positivity, and transform your challenges into opportunities. Remember, the only limits that truly exist are those we place upon ourselves. With a positive mindset, there are no limits to what we can achieve. Resilience is the very backbone of perseverance, the invisible force that enables us to keep moving forward no matter what challenges or setbacks we encounter. It's the grit and determination that turn adversity into advantage, the quiet strength that transforms defeat into victory. Building resilience isn't just about bouncing back, it's about bouncing forward. It's about using every experience, good or bad, as a stepping stone towards your goals. One of the most powerful techniques for building resilience is embracing failure as a learning opportunity. Each time we stumble, we're presented with a unique chance to gather insights, to refine our strategies, and to come back stronger. Failure isn't the opposite of success. It's part of the success journey. Setting and adjusting goals is another crucial aspect of developing resilience. Goals give us direction, but the ability to adapt and modify those goals in response to changing circumstances is what keeps us on the path to achievement. Seeking support from mentors and peers is equally important. No one achieves greatness in isolation. The guidance, encouragement, and wisdom of those who have walked the path before us can be a tremendous source of strength and resilience. Similarly, the support of our peers who are journeying alongside us provides comfort and camaraderie that can lighten even the heaviest of lows. Reflect on your own experiences where resilience led to unexpected outcomes. Think about a time when you were faced with a challenge that seemed insurmountable, yet you persevered. What did you learn? How did that experience change your approach to future challenges? Remember, building resilience is not a one-time task. It's a continuous process of growth and learning. It requires us to face our fears, to step out of our comfort zones, and to embrace the unknown with open arms. Commit to building your resilience every day. View every challenge as an opportunity to learn and grow, to set and adjust your goals as needed, and to seek and offer support to those around you. Resilience is not just about surviving. It's about living our lives with purpose, passion, and perseverance, no matter what comes our way. Together, let's embrace the journey of building resilience. Knowing that with each step we take, we're not just moving closer to our goals. We're also becoming stronger, wiser, and more capable of facing whatever the future holds. Let's remind ourselves that the true measure of our success is not just in the achievements we accumulate but in the obstacles we overcome and the resilience we build along the way. When faced with adversity, the natural response for many of us is to freeze, to become overwhelmed by the magnitude of the challenge at hand. However, the key to moving forward, to transforming these obstacles into stepping stones, lies in taking action. But not just any action. Deliberate, purposeful, and consistent action. The starting point for any journey of transformation begins with setting clear, measurable goals. It's like plotting a course on a map. You need to know your destination before you can chart the best route to get there. Your goals should be specific enough to provide direction yet flexible enough to allow for the unexpected twists and turns that life inevitably throws our way. Once you have these goals in place, the next step is to break them down into actionable steps. This is where many of us falter, not because we lack the desire or the determination, but because the gap between where we are and where we want to be seems insurmountably wide. However, when we break down our goals into smaller, manageable tasks, what once seemed impossible becomes achievable. Each task completed is a small victory, a step closer to our ultimate goal. The commitment to taking at least one small step each day towards your larger goal is about building momentum, one day. At a time, even on days when progress seems slow or non-existent, the act of moving forward, however slight, keeps the flame of progress alight. 
It's the compound effect in action. Small daily actions lead to significant long-term results. So, I pose to you a thought-provoking question. What's one step you can take today that you've been putting off? Is it making that phone call you've been dreading? Is it starting on the project you've been procrastinating on? Whatever it is, commit to taking that step today, not tomorrow, not next week, but today. It's remarkable how taking even the smallest action can begin to shift our mindset from one of paralysis to one of empowerment. In taking action, it's also important to anticipate setbacks. They're not signs of failure, but rather part of the process of achievement. When faced with a setback, take a moment to reassess, adjust your plan if necessary, and then press on with renewed determination. Remember, the journey towards any worthwhile goal is rarely a straight line. It's full of detours, roadblocks, and unexpected challenges. However, it's not the presence of these obstacles that determines our success, but our response to them. So, let's not just dream about the lives we want to lead. Let's take the actions necessary to make those dreams a reality. Let's set our goals, break them down into actionable steps, and commit to taking daily action towards achieving them. Let's build the resilience to bounce back from setbacks and the flexibility to adjust our plans as needed. Remember, every great achievement begins with the decision to try. To move forward in the face of adversity is to embrace the possibility of what could be rather than being constrained by what is. It's to understand that the power to change our circumstances lies not in waiting for the perfect moment but in taking action, however small, at every opportunity. Take a moment to reflect on the journey we've embarked upon today. We've acknowledged the inevitability of obstacles in our path, the transformative power of a positive mindset, the essential process of building resilience, and the undeniable importance of taking action. Consider the story of a small seed that finds itself buried deep under the soil. To the seed, the weight of the earth above might seem like an insurmountable obstacle. Driven by an innate desire to reach the sunlight, this tiny seed doesn't possess the strength to move the earth in one grand gesture. Instead, it grows bit by bit, day by day, facing resistance, breaking through barriers, and overcoming challenges until one day, it breaks through the surface into the sunlight. The seed, once buried and seemingly defeated by its circumstances, transforms into a strong, resilient tree, standing tall and proud. This story is a metaphor for our own lives. Like the seed, we too face obstacles that seem to bury us, challenges that appear to block our path to the sunlight. But it is in these moments that our true strength is forged. By maintaining a positive mindset, by building our resilience, and by taking action, no matter how small, we can overcome the barriers that stand in our way. So, I encourage you to apply these principles to your own life. Start with a single step, one small action towards your goal. Embrace the challenges as opportunities to learn and grow. Surround yourself with positivity, seek out mentors and peers who uplift you, and remember, every day is a chance to move closer to your dream. As we part ways, I leave you with one final thought-provoking question. Imagine where you could be a year from now if you refuse to let challenges stop you. What does that future look like? Picture it, believe in it, and then take the steps to make it a reality. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Let that step be your commitment today to move forward, to grow, and to achieve the success you've always dreamed of. The path may not be easy, but the destination is worth every challenge, every setback, and every moment of doubt. As you go forward, carry with you the knowledge that within you lies the strength, the resilience, and the power to change your life. The only question that remains is, what will you do with that power? We're going to talk about the principle of cooperation because your ability to get along with others will determine your success in life more than any other single factor. Some years ago, the Carnegie Institute of Technology analyzed 10,000 employees who were let go from their positions over a period of seven years. They found that 95% of the people who were let go from their companies were let go because of their inability to work well with others. 85% of all the problems you will ever have in life will involve other people. The very best way is to practice the golden rule, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Practice the law of sowing and reaping. If you want people to be cooperative with you, you must be cooperative with them. Treat everyone with courtesy, kindness, and patience. Remember, every person you meet is carrying a heavy load. If you practice self-discipline and have a clear sense of purpose, if you are good at what you do and accept complete responsibility for your actions, 
You strive to serve others with what they want and concentrate on your highest payoff activities. You will tend to be a positive, self-confident individual, and you will have no trouble getting along. Your power in business, industry, or politics will always be determined by who you can call upon for help and assistance. You build your power base by seeking out every opportunity to assist others with no immediate expectation of return. Of course, this strategy presupposes that you are excellent at what you do. You can only build power within an organization of value to the degree to which you are excellent at what you do. If you attempt to build a power base to compensate for a lack of excellence, what will happen is that it will just be perceived as cheap politics, and it will seldom work out. You will always do better with a plan than without, so prepare, prepare, prepare. The power is always on the side of the person with the most knowledge and the best notes and the most thorough preparation. In interacting with others, a key to cooperative relationships is to be a good listener. Here are some keys to effective listening. By the way, most people are very poor at listening, and if you become just a little bit better, you'll be amazed at the difference it will make in your interactions with others. Listen without thinking at the same time of what you're going to say. As soon as a speaker takes a breath, listen quietly, patiently, and calmly without interrupting or attempting to interrupt. If you allow three to five seconds to pass before you respond, you will be conveying to the other person very clearly that you are carefully considering the other person's remarks and you are avoiding the risk of interrupting. One other advantage to pausing is that psychologists tell us that you hear better when you pause before replying because the words that the other person has said soak in, if you like, and you get a better understanding of what the other individual actually means. Feed it back in your own words to make it clear to the other that you fully understand and you've been listening carefully. Remember, in conversation, the person who asks questions has control. All open-ended questions cannot be answered by yes or no. Examples are what, where, when, who, why, and how. These are all questions that encourage the person to expand on the subject. In building cooperative relationships, practice the law of indirect effort. The law of indirect effort says that in our relationships with others, we almost invariably get what we want more rapidly by indirect means rather than by direct means. There is nothing that will so impress another than for you to be impressed by them because then the other person will become very interested in who you are and will respect your judgment and your discernment. Another example of the law of indirect effort is if you want others to be interested in you, be interested in them. If you want others to like you, like them. If you want other people to respect you, then respect them. If you want others to believe in you, believe in them. If you want to have a friend, be a friend. The law of indirect effort is the key to effective relationships with other people. Now, here is an extension. Here are some of the keys to cooperative human relations, and they all start with acceptance. Acceptance means accepting the other person unconditionally for exactly who they are without judgment and without reservation. Acceptance or rejection is something that takes place with every interaction, and we are attuned from childhood to be very alert to whether or not we are accepted or rejected by others in social interaction. And the finest and simplest way to express acceptance is in a conversation is simply to smile. Whenever we smile at another person, it not only puts them at ease and raises their self-esteem, but when you smile, it releases endorphins in the brain and gives you a feeling of well-being and contentment. Another key to cooperation is appreciation. I think the two most beautiful words in any language are, thank you, please, and thank you, will get you just about anywhere you want to go. And one of the best things that you can do to build self-esteem in your children is to say thank you to them for everything they do for you. And one of the best things that you can do to build a happy home is to say thank you to your spouse for everything they do, small or large, around the house. Another key to cooperative human relations is approval and praise which is to acknowledge and recognize when people do things, and when they do things well. Some of the keys to approval and giving approval are, first of all, be sincere. Never express approval unless you believe it, unless you actually genuinely feel that the individual has done something that is praiseworthy. Another key to approval is to be immediate. If somebody does something, give them the praise immediately afterwards. Praise delayed is usually praise that has no effect at all. If you would like to develop a habit in another person, praise continuously until the habit is developed. If you would like to maintain the habit, then praise intermittently afterwards. In other words, praise the person every second or third time they do it to maintain the habit in place. Another key to cooperative human relations is admiration. Abraham Lincoln said, everybody likes a compliment. 
And the two things that you can quite safely compliment people on are their traits or their possessions. People are very proud of their personal traits. Compliment people on their possessions. Praising a person's children, praising a person's house, or praising a person's clothes, furniture in their house or in their office, will always be greeted well by the other person. It raises the other person's self-esteem and makes them far more receptive to working cooperatively with you. And finally, agreeability. Be agreeable. Be an agreeable person. Be the sort of person that people like to have around because you are not argumentative or difficult. And even if you disagree, ask yourself always, how important is this? And if it's not important, let it pass. One of the characteristics of people that we always enjoy is that they smile. They say thank you. They praise and approve our behaviors and actions. They admire our possessions. And they're agreeable. And they're easy to get along with. Remember this, that in business and in industry and in all organizations in our society today, all work is done by teams. And your ability to work well on a team and your ability to build an effective team to get the job done is going to determine your success as much as any other single factor. So here are some keys to encourage teamwork. Number one, make sure everyone knows what you are trying to accomplish. Make it clear that everybody on the team knows what the goals or objectives of the team are. Make sure that everybody knows why you are trying to accomplish it. What is the reason? What is the purpose? Who will be affected? And how much? People will go a long way to help you achieve the what if they know the why. Make sure everyone knows exactly what they are expected to contribute individually. Give ample praise and recognition for performance. The basic rule with regard to team building is to give lots of praise and recognition in public. Give criticism and constructive feedback in private. Personally accept 100% responsibility for anything that goes wrong. Take the blame and share the glory. Exceptional executives are always those who, if a person does not do the job, accept that it is their responsibility of having put the person in the job in the first place. Remember, people make mistakes, and it often happens that you will put a person in a job for which they are not suited. If that's the case, it is not the person's fault. It is the fault of the executive who put them in that position, and it is the responsibility of the executive to remove them. Never criticize, condemn, or complain. It lowers morale and robs people of self-esteem. Remember, everything that you do that makes other people feel good about themselves boosts your own self-esteem and makes you a more dynamic, successful person. The real key to cooperative human relations is to treat everyone as though they were the most important person in the world, a million-dollar customer. And, as I said earlier, your ability to get along with others, your ability to function well on teams, your ability to work well in meetings, and to cooperate effectively with other human beings more than anything else determine the height to which you will rise in your field or industry. Thank you.